Hello again. Now I'd like to talk about uh, setting up your model for printing from SketchUp. And uh, for this one, uh, the Windows version is slightly different than the Mac version, so uh, I thought I'd do a separate video for the Mac. Uh, anyway, uh, the first thing is, uh, you know, you may be missing a few bits and pieces from your model, uh, and I've talked about bringing in components. Um, one type of component that you might want uh, to look at is a door, and I, I happen to search for a closet door because everybody, you know, likes lovely bifold closet doors. Uh, and these work like any other components. The trick is some components are meant to snap into a wall. So you see how as I move my mouse over this wall, the component kind of snaps into place. Now, they don't always cut open the walls. And even in this model, because we brought it in from AutoCAD, it's not going to behave as well as objects that are made originally in SketchUp. So in this case, probably about the, as good as you're going to get is uh, what you see right here, where it snaps into the wall, but it doesn't actually cut the wall opening. Um, if you wanted to make something like a window, of course, you can always hunt for a window uh, through the uh, components menu. Um, you can also just use the SketchUp uh, tools to cut a window. Uh, the trick with that is you have to s use the select tool, which is over here, it's the arrow. You can also hit the space bar, by the way, and I find that I leave my right hand, I'm left-handed, uh, on, on the uh, keyboard so that I can quickly access uh, the select command. And I'm going to click on the existing conditions here, the ones that I brought in from AutoCAD, and you see how it comes in as a big, giant model, uh, kind of one piece. And this is akin to a, uh, an AutoCAD block. You can edit those just by double clicking on it. And you see how when I do that, I get this boundary line around the model. And objects that are not part of that group or component, for example, this door, are kind of grayed out or just desaturated somewhat. Anyway, once I'm editing this uh, existing conditions, uh, any of my tools are available. I can select objects, I can move them, but I can also draw on them. So I'm going to just draw a, a rectangle on this outer wall here, and that'll make a very nice window. Um, if I really want uh, something fancy and I want to show the horizon line, I can use the push-pull command. That's this one here. You can also type the letter P to access it. And uh, what you'll see, let me just make sure I have this surface here selected. You don't need to, but sometimes uh, SketchUp doesn't recognize it. Um, when I click on that surface, you see how I can grab it and move it out to uh, uh, a different spot. Uh, when I move it back a little bit, see how I get this weird looking um, preview, and it says on face, and that means it sees the back surface of the wall. I can just click at that point, and it actually cuts the window right open, and I can see the horizon line. So that's pretty handy, and you could even do that for the door opening if it wasn't working uh, properly. Now, how do I get out of this component edit mode? I go back to my select command, or I hit the space bar, either one, and then move my mouse out beyond this gray boundary and just double click. If you're inside the model and you're fiddling around with components and you're like, oh, I can't see the boundary box, you can also go to the Edit pull-down menu and choose Close Group or Component, depending on what you're editing. Okay, And that happens very frequently where you're inside the model and you just can't figure out how to get out of a component or a group. Uh, so now the other thing is, uh, you can see I have some saved scenes for these different views that I have set up, you know, different perspective views. Um, a number of uh, you will have several scenes saved, and it starts to get a little unwieldy because you can't remember which one is which. Um, and I usually save an overview just so I can quickly fiddle around with the model. Um, if you want to uh, change the names of these scenes just to be sort of organized, um, you can right-click on one of the scenes and choose Scene Manager. And the scene manager brings up a list of your scenes, and you can even change the order of these scenes if you really felt like it. Um, and that actually uh, is how you create an animated view of your project. So anyway, uh, down here there's a field for name, and I could call it, oh, I don't know, overview. And just hit enter, and what you'll see is the name changes up here. You don't have to do that, um, but uh, for those of you who are uh, really getting into SketchUp, this will make your life a little easier. So I'm just going to close out of that. 
Now, uh, how do we uh, set up this model to print? Let me let me go to one of my perspective views here. There, beautiful perspective. Um, in uh, SketchUp, the uh, there are two steps to it on a Mac. Um, first of all, uh, you are going to want to go to the Page Setup menu, and uh, you just go to the File Pull Down menu. And this is, this is really true of most uh, software. Uh, on the Mac is you go to the file pull down menu and there's somewhere in there is a page setup or the document setup. Uh, in our case the page setup is what you want to look at and it kind of has a generic page setup um, and uh, sometimes you'll see the page sizes uh, depending on you know what else what other things you have installed on your computer and if you printed large format or not so this one actually it has an arch d which is a 24 by 36 but i want uh, 11 by 17 now mine happens to have tabloid size tabloid is 11 by 17 but i'm going to add one that's called 11 by 17 just so i can remember it um, and when you go to the custom paper sizes you can uh, see all the ones that are that have been custom made. I must have made that, I guess. I don't remember that. Anyway, I'm going to click the plus sign, add a new one, and of course, I'm going to rename it so that I know what it was that I'm creating. Uh, click 11 by 17 to name it. And then, of course, you want to change the paper size. I want it 17 wide and 11 inches high. Okay? And the margins here, uh, 0.25 inches is probably fine. Uh, for our printer. I think that's what's our, what our printer does. Anyway, I'm going to click OK. And you see now it has that as a, a size that I can grab in any document. Uh, anyway, click OK. And now when you want to go to print, you can just go uh, Command P, or you can always choose it from the pull down menu as well. And you see SketchUp tells you the uh, shortcuts that are available um, for different options. Anyway, when you go to the print menu, you can see now it is actually previewing an 11 by 17 model, and it knows, uh, you know, the view that you're in. It always prints the view that you're in. Um, and uh, for now, it doesn't really actually matter which printer I have. And in fact, this printer is uh, doesn't even have 11 by 17 pages, but somehow through the magic of the virtual world, it's allowing it. Um, you can also choose a higher quality, and this is great if you're... Uh, planning to print a, a nice quality image out of SketchUp, but we're just tracing these, so we don't really care. Anyway, uh, Macs, uh, all Macs have this feature where in the print menu, you can save a uh, file, a print uh, view as a PDF file. Uh, and this is super handy um, uh, because PDF files retain all the graphic information of uh, whatever view you're printing. Um, but they are readable by many different types of devices. So I'm just going to choose Save as PDF, and I'm going to put it on my desktop, and let's see, I'll call it uh, Test. How about that? Okay, oh, I have one on the desktop already. And now if you want to see what that looks like, there it is. It gives me a little PDF preview, um, and this is something you can open and send to the printer. Okay, now... Um, other things that you might want to do in your uh, project, um, a couple things. You can see I drew a floor on here. Um, you might also uh, want to um, uh, draw a roof on. I'm not going to draw it on right, right now. Um, and that's just a rectangle. You just draw a rectangle over the roof. Um, another thing that you might want to do is try to draw a floor plan. Now, it's not required for me. You already have your AutoCAD plans, and most of you seem to be doing quite well in AutoCAD, and that's that's good. Um, and printing from AutoCAD, while it's not as transparent as uh, uh, I'd like it to be, um, it's a little easier than printing a 3D model. But uh, let me show you how to do that, uh, how to set up a plan. Uh, just in case some of you are making a lot of changes in your model, in your SketchUp model. If you are, by all means, uh, print it. Um, first of all, this is not a plan, right? This is a perspective view from above. Um, the uh, uh, SketchUp allows you to uh, set up some standard views. Uh, just like in AutoCAD, there's that view cube that shows up on the kind of upper right of your uh, view screen. 
um, there are the same standard views, front, side, back, top, and bottom. And in AutoCAD, when you click on the word top, it, it spins you around to the top of the model. Well, in SketchUp, it's the same way. The only difference is that we're already in perspective view in SketchUp. So you can see this is, this is a one-point perspective. It's a bird's eye. And there's some weird stuff with the toilet up on the ceiling and other things like that. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, unless you're planning to do a bird's eye, we want to convert this to something a little more plannish. So uh, the way you do that is under the camera pull down menu, this is where we were converting our views to a two point perspective. We can also convert it to parallel projection, and that's a plan view. You can see that's a nice flat view. The other thing is uh, when you're printing a plan, you probably don't want all this green as the background color, um, and that's easy to get rid of. SketchUp uses what are called styles to control the graphic look of your screen. I'm just going to click that styles pull down menu and uh, what you'll see in this uh, styles menu, there are a number of different options here. Uh, my current style is called simple style and that's fine with me. Um, and uh, anyway, it normally shows the sky and the sky is blue and you can you can control that. Anyway, the background color, which is I think meant to mimic grass, really. You can control that. I could make it, you know, some beautiful color. Or if I just click on one of these boxes down here, see how they're all white? That uh, makes it print black and white. You can also control other things. For example, these drawing axes, the uh, red, green, and blue axes. You can turn those off um, by clicking on one of these other options here, if I can remember which one it is. Oh, here it is. You can just click on this button. Those don't print, by the way. So um, you don't actually have to worry about them too much. Uh, anyway, and that's how you change the style. And of course, if I um, want to come back to this floor plan, all I have to do is choose Add Scene. And what I do, because I've changed the graphic look, I'm going to save whatever changes I've made as a new style. And that way I don't mess up the other ones, because each scene has its own style. So anyway, I'll create the scene. Oh, it's scene number six. Now, of course, that's confusing. So I'm going to go to my scene manager, and I'll call scene number six plan view. Plan view. OK. And close out of that. Oh, I think I messed up. Changed, renamed the wrong one. Oh, well. Anyway, um, to print this puppy, there is one additional step, which is you have to go to the document setup menu. So again, here, let me show that a little more slowly. File document setup. So not page setup this time, but document setup. And the key is normally SketchUp uh, expands or contracts the view to fit on a page. Now what we want to do is print to scale. So in the drawing, the drawing is full scale. So one foot, when we print it, oh, is going to be Oh, I think I've got this uh, incorrectly here. One, the drawing is what we're going to print out. One quarter of an inch, uh, or maybe, yeah, let's see if that works, equals one foot in the model, which is the model is drawn full scale. And what it will do is it will tell you how many pages you need. I guess um, because I'm zoomed out a little bit, it, um, it wants me to uh, use four pages. Uh, I'm just going to make this eighth inch scale for now. You see how when I change that number, it tells me exactly how many pages are required. Anyway, I click OK. And now when I go to print, Command P, uh, you will see a preview of exactly what you're going to see. And I am zoomed out quite a bit, so uh, obviously that's going to be um, printed. So if I want to zoom in a little bit more, that might uh, make it fit on 11 by 17. It's probably pretty close. Uh, anyway, and then uh, just like before, you save as a PDF, and because the PDF is scaled and has all the uh, line weights and colors, um, it should print perfectly to scale. Uh, one last thing uh, to note, uh, because I have a color hatch on this plan, uh, if I were to render on top of this plan, um, that would give me a nice base of color. Again, not everybody likes that. I know you all experimented with it in class, but it might be something uh, that you'd want to experiment with. Anyway, and that's all it is to print from a Mac.